So let's say that you've just determined that a two-dimensional vector field is conservative. Now you're interested in determining a potential function. So with that in mind, suppose that you have your two-dimensional vector field. We'll use P and Q for the two component functions. So here's what you are able to deduce at this point. We know that the partial derivative of your generating function with respect to x is equal to p. We also know that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is going to be q. Now the way that we're going to determine what the original function is, is we know the partial derivatives of the original function. If we know partial derivatives, then integrating should take us back to the original function. You're allowed to start with either one of these. Eventually we're going to use both of them. <clears throat> so without loss of generality, let's start with the first one. We know that the partial derivative of f with respect to x is equal to p. So what we're going to do is integrate, integrate with respect to x. Now this would be considered an iterated integral where we're treating y as though it's a constant. So upon integrating with respect to x, we will have little f of xy is equal to the iterated integral of p with respect to x. However, because this is an indefinite integral, there should be a plus a constant at the end. But when we're integrating with respect to x, anything with a y in it could potentially be a constant, which <coughs> excuse me, means that we're going to have, instead of just a generic plus c, we're going to have plus some function of y. Our next goal is going to be determine g of y. The way that we're going to determine g of y is by using the piece of information that we've not yet used. So what we're going to do is take a partial derivative with respect to y. I'm going to give us partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to, oh, this is going to look a little complicated, but this is the partial derivative with respect to y of the iterated integral of p with respect to x plus, if there are no x's present to hold constant, then taking a partial derivative is the same as taking an exact derivative or an ordinary derivative. So instead of partial derivative, this will be just g prime of y. <clears throat> We're interested in solving this for g. We do want to determine g, so let's isolate it on one side of the equation. We can do so by subtracting this big nasty looking thing right here. So partial derivative of f with respect to y minus the partial derivative with respect to y of the iterated integral of p with respect to x. Now, one big important thing to note at this point is that this function on the right-hand side is a function of only one variable. It is a function of only y. Function of only y. Now, this is what g prime of y is, so we're going to integrate with respect to y. If this expression has any x's in it, then this thing was not conservative to begin with. <clears throat> so we're going to integrate with respect to y. This will give us g of y is equal to, oh boy, all right, so this will be the indefinite integral of the partial derivative of f with respect to y minus the partial derivative with respect to y of the iterated integral of p dx dy. And I guarantee you this process is not as complicated as this whole thing looks. But once you get this, we plug it back into what we had up here, and that will be our potential function. I wanted to demonstrate this process once because it's really not as bad as the notation makes it look. So with that in mind, here is a vector field. We have capital F is equal to 3x squared y cubed minus 2x and 3x cubed y squared plus 5y to the fourth. First thing I'd like to do is test for conservativeness. I don't know if that's the official term, but we're going to go with it. So referring to the first component function as p and the second component function as q, we are going to take the partial derivative of p with respect to y. We'll be treating y as the variable and x as the constant, which will give us 
3x squared times the derivative of y cubed, which will be 3y squared, minus 2x is a constant, that will go away. That leaves us with 9x squared, y squared. For the partial derivative of q with respect to x, we'll see something similar. Treating y as though it's a constant and x as though it's our variable, this will be 3 times 3x squared times y squared, plus derivative of a constant term would be 0. So once again we get 9x squared y squared. Therefore we have ourselves a conservative vector field. <clears throat> Next we'll determine the generating function or potential function. So determine f such that the gradient of f is equal to the vector field f. So what we know at this point is that the partial derivative of f with respect to x is going to be 3x squared y cubed minus 2x and we also know that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 3x cubed y squared plus 5y to the fourth. You are allowed to start with either one of these. Arbitrarily I'm going to pick this one right here and I'm going to integrate with respect to x. So this will be the integral of 3x squared y cubed minus 2x with respect to x. The 3x squared, treating y cubed as though it's a constant, will be x cubed y cubed. Minus 2x will become minus x squared. And then we are potentially also allowed to have some function of y as that would have been treated as a constant term. Next, I'm going to take the derivative of this expression with respect to y and then compare it to what it's supposed to be from the conservative vector field. So differentiating this with respect to y, and this will be partial derivative with respect to y of all of this, x cubed y cubed minus x squared plus g of y. Make sure we got all that correct. So the x cubed y cubed will treat x cubed as a constant multiple and differentiate the y cubed. We'll get 3x cubed y squared. Minus x squared would be a constant term that goes to 0. And g of y would be g prime of y. That is an ordinary derivative since it had no x's to begin with. <clears throat> However, from back here, I now know what the partial derivative of f with respect to y is supposed to be. It's supposed to be all of this. So I'm going to make that substitution on the left-hand side. Then I'm going to compare that to what I got at the previous step. 3x cubed y squared plus g prime of y. Now again, the goal at this point is to attempt to solve for g of y, so I want to isolate it on one side. I can do that by subtracting this term over to the other side. You'll notice that those two terms were the same and therefore will cancel each other out. This leaves us with g prime of y is equal to, I said on the other side of the page that this should be a function of only y, and we see that it is. Integrating this will let us know what g of y is equal to. That would be y to the fifth power, potentially plus a constant. Now, this is not an iterated integral, this is actually an indefinite integral, which is why your plus c is just a plus c, no more functions of x associated with it. So next I'm going to head back to this step right here and just make a substitution on the g of y that we just got and that will be our potential function. So f of xy is equal to, that was x cubed y cubed minus x squared plus g of y. Now whether or not you include the plus c is sort of dealer's choice on this one. I like to include it, but there are situations where it's not necessarily appropriate to include it. For those that are going on to differential equations after this course, this is a process that you will see again for solving certain differential equations. <clears throat>